This is the first section of chapter five on straight line graphs, and this is on y equals mx plus c. So you would have come across y equals mx plus c at GCSE, where m represents the gradient of the line and c represents the y-intercept of the line. Now, the way that we calculate the gradient is the change in y over the change in x or the rise over the run. But if we just take two general points here on a coordinate grid and we've got a line like this and we want to find the gradient of this, if we pick any two coordinates on that line and let's call them x1, y1 and x2, y2, then the gradient is going to be the change in y. So that's going to be y2 minus y1 over the change in x, which is going to be x2 minus x1. Now it can be the other way around. So it could be y1 minus y2. But we also need to make sure that this bottom part is x1 minus x2. Example one, work out the gradient of the line joining negative 2, 7 and 4, 5. So to find a gradient, let's call this x1, this y1, this coordinate x2, and this y2. So if we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that will give us 5 minus 7 over 4 minus, now x1 is negative 2, so it's minus negative 2. So 5 minus 7 is going to give us negative 2. 4 minus negative 2 is going to give us 6. And we can simplify that. That becomes minus a third. Now what if instead I did y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2? Do I get the same answer? Well, y1 now would be 7, so I'd have 7 minus 5 over x1 would be negative 2 minus 4. So what does that give us? Well, that gives us 2 at the top and negative 6 at the bottom. So we still get negative a third. So you, it doesn't matter which way around, as long as this column of coordinates here are from the same set of brackets. So those got to be from the same bracket. Those have got to be the same bracket. If I did, for example, 5 minus 7 at the top and then negative 2 minus 4 at the bottom, that will be incorrect. So keep the pairs together. But it doesn't matter which way around you do it. As you can see, you'll get the same answer. Example 2, the line joining negative 5 to 4a has gradient negative 1, work out the value of a. So as we've done before, we know the gradient is going to be y2 minus y1, or the other way around, over x2 minus x1. Right, so my y2 is I'm going to call a, y1 will be negative 5, so minus negative 5. So don't forget you still subtract the negatives over x2, so that's got to be 4, minus x1, which is 2. And we know that has a value of negative 1 is given in the question. So this is now just about working out what a is. So let's work out what we get down here and at the top. So a minus negative 5 will just become a plus 5. 4 minus 2 just becomes 2 equals negative 1. So from there, I multiply both sides by 2. So I get a plus 5 equals negative 2. Then I will add, uh, take away 5 from both sides. So I'll get a value of a of negative 7. And I can put it in here just to check. So if I have negative 7 minus negative 5, which is like negative 7, actually let's write it down as working rather than trying to do it in our head. So negative 7 minus negative 5 over 4 minus 2. So that will give me negative 7 plus 5, which is negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 
and that equals negative one. So that tells me this has to be the correct answer. So you should now be able to do exercise 5a on pages 90 to 91. So what we're going to look at now is the different way or a different way of writing the equation of a straight line. So, so far, we've only ever used this form to write the equation of a straight line. We can write the equation of a straight line in this form. AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Now, a couple of things we need to note about this. The first thing is that this C here is not the same as this C here. Okay, so this is not the intercept. So this is not the intercept. So you don't just take this number here and put it here, it's different. And the second thing is, is that the values of A, B and C we want to write them as whole numbers. Okay, so um, we'll just put here where A, B and C, their whole numbers are integers. Now this is just another standard way of writing the equation of a straight line and we'll use this quite often, but you can't get the gradient and intercept directly by just looking at these numbers. There is a little calculation you can do to find it, but probably the easiest way to find a gradient is to rearrange this into the form at y equals mx plus c. Okay, so if you need to find m and c, that's from the y equals mx plus c, form, then rearrange the AX plus BY plus C equals zero form into Y equals MX plus C. Now, if you want to know algebraically how we can get from this form to Y equals MX plus C, well, if we took away B, Y and C from both sides, or sorry, if we took away um, A, X and B and C from both sides, we'll end up with this. Then divide both sides by B, we end up with this form. So algebraically, negative B over A gives you M and negative C over B gives you the value of C from Y equals M, X plus C. But rather than try and memorize this, it's probably easier just to rearrange but you could memorize this and use this as another way of finding the gradient and the intercept but be careful you don't want to memorize it incorrectly or forget it in an exam example three write down the gradient and y intercept of these lines we'll start with a y equals negative 3x plus 2 that's nice and easy i can see that the gradient there's no rearranging required is equal to negative 3 and then for b 4x minus 3y plus 5 equals 0 so let's rearrange it into the form y equals mx plus uh, c so i'll have negative 3y equals negative 4x minus 5 i'll times everything by negative 1 to get 3y equals 4x minus 5 what I'll do after that is divide everything by 3 and I'll get y equals 4 over 3x minus 5 over 3. So I can see from that that the gradient is equal to 4 over 3. Now, if we had memorized um, how to find m and c, then we might have said to ourselves, right, a is 4, b is negative 3 and C is five, and the way that I find M, that's negative A over B. So that would be M equals negative A over B, negative three. So you get the same answer, four thirds, but it doesn't take very long just to rearrange it and use this method. Example four, 
we're going to write these lines in the form ax plus by plus c. So we'll start with a y equals 4x plus 3. You'll notice that in this form everything is on one side. So we'll write this as y minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. And we'll just get everything the right way around. So we'll have negative 4x plus y minus 3 equals 0. And in fact, any multiple of this is correct as well. So I'll just write that down. Or any multiple. So for example, I could multiply everything by negative 1 and have 4x minus y plus 3 equals 0. Or I could times everything by 2 and have 8x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. As long as these are integers here, any multiple of this is fine. OK, moving on to part B, we have y equals negative a half x plus 5. So we'll move everything to one side. So we'll have uh, y plus a half x minus 5 equals 0. Now, remember, these need to be integers here. So we're going to times everything by 2 and get 2y plus x minus 10 equals 0. And we'll just rearrange it so we have the x term at the beginning. So x plus 2y minus 10 equals 0. And just like before, any multiple of this, as long as these are kept as integers, whole numbers. Example 5, the line y equals 4x minus 8 meets the x-axis at the point P work out the coordinates of p so if we're looking at where a line meets the x-axis that means y is equal to zero so i'll give us zero equals 4x minus 8 which means that 4x equals 8 which give us a value of x equals 8 over 4 which is 2. now that's the value of x we want the actual coordinates of p so x is 2 because we made y equal to 0. Now even if the equation of the line were written in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0 we can still use the same method to work out where a graph crosses the x or the y axis by either making x equal to 0 by finding where it crosses the y-axis or y equals zero to find out where it crosses um, the x-axis. So you should now be able to do exercise 5b on pages 92 to 93.